Where do you come from? You're listening to Ladies Night on the Provoke and Inspire Podcast. Welcome to the Hi. Provoke and Inspire podcast. This is Hello. Ladies Night. Uh, I admit that that wasn't the smoothest thing I've ever done. <laughs> it went from a minute countdown to, to a, a six ten second, no, a six second oh. countdown. Hey, but rest assured, I will smooth those things out, and I'll have mm -hmm. you. I'll have you notice that people were here and ready yeah. from the beginning. And so, if That's nothing true, else, that makes buddy. us feel good, right, ladies? Yeah, you have a lot of enthusiasm in your voice today. You got it. You have to. <laughs> Good. You, I know why. Because he had like twenty. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna speak in hyperbole. But truthfully, he's probably had ten cups of coffee oh. today. Oh. And that is not an exaggeration, is it, Ben? No, it's probably not. He but... always gets mad at me. You always speak in hyperbole. In the word in irony, I just spoke in hyperbole. In the words of, of the late David Pierce, I'm not wait, a wait, monk. Wait, 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 wait. Late. I don't know. It makes it sound more. I don't know. Just you're gonna have to back off that mic a little because you, oh, you, you peeking girl, you sorry. peeking. So, uh, provoking inspire podcast, calling followers of Jesus to radical faith outside of the church. Uh, sorry for those. Uh, that that the shabby introduction. Yeah. It was it was well, a little odd. If the shoe fits. If the shoe fits. That's been the apparently the the theme of the week in our house because Courtney has said no less than nine times <laughs> the words if the shoe fits so you know I don't know how to feel about that and ironically that is the topic of the day is feelings uh mm -hmm. I'm going to set that up in a little bit here but before I do uh, I do want to remind you that there are many ways that you can be involved in our community you can support this podcast uh, one of the ways you can do that is to listen to all of the episodes that come out throughout the week. We do this on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. They come out in audio format the next day, about 24 hours. Uh, and uh, you should check that out. If you occasionally check out this live stream, maybe you only catch a snip. Maybe you're making tea and you can't focus throughout the duration <laughs> of the conversation. Go back or go forward uh, and check out the episodes as they come. You look so tiny. Well, Don't you think he looks tiny? That's something no man ever. And wants I to am hear. getting larger as the days progress. <laughs> hold on, hold on. But he looks really tiny. Yeah. Okay. Well, no. Oh. Well, I, I actually, mean, <laughs> you're almost, you're actually almost equal. And now he's high. Now he's tall. Now yeah. you're, you're Anyway, we're doing spire, a lot. We're so doing. You look good. You look, you look good. Yeah, Guys, yeah. we're doing a lot of things that the listening audience will have no bearing for. So can we oh, keep, sorry. can we describe what we see? Can ben we... looked really tiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's good. Now <laughs> everyone knows. it was disturbing me because I did not look very tiny. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so how can you support this podcast? You can check out past or uh, podcasts as they come out in audio format. Uh, type Provoke and Inspire uh, in Google. Uh, it'll be all over your front page. Many results. Uh, it's also on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and such. You can rate the podcast and or review it. That increases our exposure. Uh, and I want to mention before we launch into our topic that we have something coming up through Steiger, the mission that this podcast is a part of, called the Steiger Compact School. And because of our global pandemic, we have been forced to do it online for the first time ever. And from what I understand, we have over 550 people signed up to the, the Steiger time. Compact School. Right, Jody? Mm -hmm. The last time I looked, it was 607, but I haven't looked for a wow. little bit. Wow. Yeah. Oh, 607. Awesome. Yeah. So this is your opportunity. I, I think this is hitting on a felt need because I think a lot of people have heard about Steiger. They're interested in Steiger. 607 is the exact number, apparently. Um, but, you David know, David would know for various reasons, people are unable to get to one of our compact schools or to the Steiger Mission School in Germany, although we highly recommend you do that. Uh, and, and so this is their opportunity to get the training uh, to hear from our leaders and the, the different missionaries we have all over the world uh, in an online way. And so obviously, uh, you know, we put out the uh, the word and you have responded uh, en masse. Great. So we're really Great. excited about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, sure you can just happening. go ahead and click this little red button that you should be able to now see. I've scrolled. Register now. I don't know what the limit is, but my goodness, 607. Well, that is a that is a dope number. Yeah, it's not going to be too much bigger than that. It's going to be, I think we're going to cut it off at 850. 
So eight fifty. It's, it's yep. So those of you who want to do it, you're gonna have to do it. It's, yep. It's Steiger. Going fast. Dot org that's s t e i g e r dot org slash compact to get to this page that you can see uh, go on there hit the register now button and be involved uh, with the first ever uh, Steiger Compact School online so that's super exciting mm -hmm. uh, all right so all right. Uh, let me set up this conversation um, I woke up on Sunday and I was just feeling weird. Like I'm just gonna be real honest with you. I didn't. It's it's hard to even understand sometimes where that feeling was coming from, what was contributing to it, uh, and it carried on through into Monday and even a little bit into yesterday. And as I was reflecting on the offness that I was going through, um, I, I thought it was a really important subject to bring up on this podcast as it relates to we all wrestle with this inner voice, right? The, these feelings, these emotions. Um, there, there, are, um, so many different things contribute to them. There are so many factors that influence them. Anything from very superficial things like, am I hungry to very deep things? Like, am I dealing with some trauma or some personal thing I'm going through in my life? Um, and all of us kind of have this lonely journey in some ways of having to navigate and manage and cope with that inner thing, right? That inner voice, that emotion, that those feelings. Um, and so I thought it'd be a really interesting topic to say, how do we navigate that? Especially in times like this, where sometimes routine and rhythm can mask what really is going in, inside of us, um, which is why being thrown out of your rhythm, maybe when you travel or when you lose a job or when you're sick, these, these tend to be the times when feelings really come even more strongly to the surface. And I think this pandemic um, has probably made it that many more people are dealing with this than they did previously for lack of distractions. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so Jody, maybe starting with you, when you feel this way, and I know I'm not the only one, I posted this mm -hmm. on my page. I said, how do you deal with feeling off? And I had tons of comments like, Is that oh, right? I do this, or I I try to listen to music or whatever. Mm -hmm. So Gary, what's up, Gary? Um, sorry, he's just driving in his car. I didn't even know he drove in cars. I thought he was mm. just chained to a bus somewhere. Always trucks, always whatever. So Jody, when yeah. you feel off, well, first of all, what do you make of this topic in general? How about we start there? I actually really like it. I've done a lot of thinking about it because it is something. It is something that we all deal with. And even I, it's interesting that you you were saying, oh, this is how I felt the last couple of days because it was interesting this morning. I I, I woke up at whatever, very early here, 4.30 or something like that. And and I just felt, I felt down. And I thought, I, I'm typically pretty steady but i thought mm -hmm. oh this is interesting so it's really really i guess my first point would be it's really really normal to you know for your emotions to go up and down but you do need to figure that out and how to deal with that and i have right. all kinds of things that that i could say about that you know i you know i even have a you know i have a definition of that you know to the ability to to stay you know this is what how i define mentally and emotionally strong and then i'll throw it back to you is it's the ability to stay steady, to do the right thing when you don't feel like it, when you're tired, when you're moody, when you're afraid, or when your circumstances are bad. That's one definition. I have several, but so so that's what I I, I wrestle with. So yeah, I mean I, I I can start that, you know, but but that's okay. that's kind of the beginning of what I'd like to say. Yeah. Mm. And I I don't feel like people have maybe been forced to deal with their feelings up until, I mean, that's not necessarily true, but up until this point of, of quarantine, you of course have had feelings and have gone through highs and lows and have maybe felt, you know, bouts of, um, not depression, but you know, of just darkness in your life. But then mm. the next thing kind of carries you through to moving on from those feelings. And it's so interesting in a time like this where we're not moving on to the next thing. We don't have um, the next promotion or even the next hangout with your friend or the next mm -hmm. cool television show to watch, which sounds silly, but there's really nothing going on next. <laughs> and so then you're just kind of like here with your emotions. Yeah. And that can be a really scary place to be when there's nothing to spur you on to kind of overcome that emotive state. And I'm not saying it's good to cover your feelings with the next thing, but that's typically, I would say how even 
even how I can deal with it. Like I feel a strong emotion and I just think, oh, it's fine. Tomorrow I get to go to work. I get to see this person. I get to experience this joy in my life and it will be fine. And then typically it is fine because I'm so Mm -hmm. fickle in how I feel Mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it it speaks to a larger um, remedy in our culture, which is to ignore or distract or pave over Mm -hmm. and not sit in that place of, what is going on yeah. inside of me, right, Anya? I think we've yeah. probably, as a modern society, lost the ability to be okay in silence and mm-hmm. to to be, it's scary to peel back the layers and say, what is going on inside of my heart and mind? Mm-hmm. Why do I feel the way I do? It's easier to just say, oh, it's nothing, I'll be fine. I just I just need to get to the next thing or I need to keep moving because Mm -hmm. invariably, unless it's a very serious condition and some people have very Mm -hmm. serious conditions, most of us, I think, can reduce it to a low enough hum that that the busyness of life drowns everything, drowns that feeling out. Right. So it's part of this that we don't we don't really want to go there. We don't necessarily even want to get to the bottom of why we're feeling the way we do. Yeah. Yeah, it's really um, interesting this time now because I feel like <laughs> I am a very emotional person. I think most of the women are. But um, but this time, especially now during this um, coronavirus uh, quarantine, I think I can't, <laughs> I can't remember when I had such a up and downs all the time. Uh, just basically every day fight, fighting with my feelings yeah. because I start the day, I have to start the day very fast. And then, and then I, I am put, uh, into the job that I was not prepared to, which is to be a teacher. Hmm. And I have to, um, do a lot of things that, um, I basically, basically, um, it's not my gift. It's not my things that I have to do at the moment. <laughs> and I have to, uh, because I love my children with my whole heart. <laughs> so I, so are, I you con- my- are you convincing yourself of that, <laughs> that, that statement right now? It's true. It's I true. love <laughs> my children. <laughs> Everyone together now. I love <laughs> <laughs> no, I just put them to sleep. So that's why I just like, I really love them. Now you do, yeah. <laughs> no, and I start the day really like you were talking about coping with emotions. And um, I start the day with, um, with just going by myself uh, to the forest. And um, I have actually here next to our house, the forest and with the river. And it's just something special. I think all of the people emotion somehow and they have this um this place where they can actually um calm down and they can just be quiet i i do it because i really have a good time with god there and i i this is my place where i can switch off and just be there Mm. and straight away i just whatever i read in the bible whatever i say i just feel like god is there and um but like you said it's just um I think he, um I think because it's a different situation I'm trying to cope with my feelings now more deeply like I'm trying to understand and I think about this more because in normal life what I did I went to to the office with people and I had to be good you know I had to straight away and with the family context you sometimes mm-hmm. you you don't act like you are okay you know you just act mm-hmm. differently so you need yeah. to really um, uh, think and fight sometimes with these emotions because you know that some emotions are right and some emotions are not. And you have mm-hmm. to really deal with them and you need to fight and go through this and and ask yourself, why do you feel like this? Why, you know, you have problem with this or that? And mm-hmm. and I think it's a good time. I, even it's very difficult, like I'm saying, during this time I have up and down. But still, I feel like it's um, it's very um, good time for me to go through these emotions and ask God, like, why am I feeling like this? Why am I acting like this? Why am I saying these things in the way that I shouldn't? Or 
you know, and just just inside of me, I just I say it, and then I feel bad, and I'm just fighting with myself, and just it's 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 really um, yeah. a really crazy time. Yeah, and I think I think we're hitting on something from the beginning here, Jody, and I know you have a ton of teaching on this, and so I don't want to. I don't want to dominate at all, but I think a good place to start with this is to, you know, if we're if we're asking the question, first of all, I think we've established the fact that we all go through this. So that's an important mm -hmm, thing to mm -hmm. acknowledge. And, and, and I think it's important to acknowledge that it's a very real part of our existence, but we can ignore it. And I think mm. to ignore it is is a very dangerous thing because I, I think our feelings are they're they're telling us something. I think there, there's this subconscious, yeah. even this mingling of spirit and subconsciousness and emotions. And it's it's this very real part of us that, that it's a little bit trapped underneath the busyness and the suppression of, of everything that we're doing. I I think of the, you know, there's the um, Henry David Thoreau quote uh, where he, he talks about, I went into the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to only front the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach me. And not when I came to die, discovered that I'd not really lived. And, and the reason why I think that quote is interesting to me is that and the unexamined life is not worth living. And I think sometimes we get so busy and we do, 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 and we don't, we don't really take the time or have the courage to look mm -hmm. deep enough and deliberately enough at what we're feeling, what's driving us, what do I really, what is really the truly the nature of reality in terms of how I'm viewing things. So, so part of it, I guess I'm trying to say, Jody, is shouldn't we lean into this and embrace this and say, I, I need to. I need to not run from this and medicate this or distract this. I actually need to to soak everything out of this that I can because it's maybe trying to tell me something. Mm. Yeah, it's an interesting question, Ben, because I I wonder about it because emotions are are not stable. You know, they're they're up and down, and sometimes they're totally irrational. Right. And and so, how much that that is a question actually I have in my in my teaching and my thoughts mm -hmm. is do we analyze our emotions? Because let me just tell you a quick example and then maybe we can answer that because i think it's pretty important yeah. is um when i was when we first when i had you guys when you were little um i i had decided pretty early on that that i wanted to give you a gift and that was i wanted to be happy every morning when i woke up i, I wanted to give you that gift of stability that they could depend or that you sorry hmm. that you could depend on me in being a certain way you know just this you know the same every day because if you don't have that it's really not, not a nice atmosphere so it doesn't mean i didn't make mistakes or you know got angry and all that stuff but that was my choice you know is to say i am going to be happy even if i don't feel like it okay so there's that choice hmm. but maybe and and so you ignore in that case your emotions mm -hmm. but is it a healthy thing maybe also at times to analyze your emotions that's well, that's I, a good mm -hmm. I, I think that that it, you can't i mean there's there there's layers to this and as i yep, said in the yep. beginning that there's so many things that contribute to emotions and so you need a healthy grid uh, and a healthy sorting process but i i think that ultimately um you need to have a solid foundation mm. um, so that because ultimately it is a choice, right? But I think it's it's like you can continue to choose to live in a house with faulty foundations, but eventually that thing, that sucker going to collapse. Right. Right. And so yeah. I choose, I, I feel terrible, but I'm going to live in this house and it's <laughs> fragile and feeble and I hope it stands, mm. but I'm going to choose. And, and, and so I think, yes, choose but you also have to fix the mm -hmm. things that are the source of that discontentment and and so for i kind of have a process here which is that i think the first part is we need to pay attention yeah. right we need to live deliberately and pay attention and and say wow i'm feeling things i didn't feel before but they were probably always there but suppressed by busyness um but i would say the second step is we need to have a sorting process you don't yeah. just take all feelings as same equal weight they all deserve equal merit mm -hmm. we need to have an ability to sort the good and the bad, the, the superficial from the deep, the fake from the real. Isn't there a sorting aspect to this, Courtney, that is essential if we're going to be healthy emotionally? Yeah, and I would mm -hmm. say not it's not guaranteed, but for the most part, if we really sit and are self-aware enough to analyze, and again, it's not a given that we are self-aware, and obviously we all have moments where 
we are not aware of the kind of person that mm-hmm. we are being. Mm-hmm. But I do think that as you mature in your walk with God, something that you need to ask for is self being self-aware of how you function in everyday circumstances, like analyzing your feelings. And then you're able to kind of sort it and say, okay, this is just me being dramatic, although I don't like that word. Um, This is me just having a feeling that doesn't mean anything. And then this is actually me having a feeling that does mean something. And Mm -hmm. I agree. I think what Ben is saying is that a lot of times those feelings that we have are something that is a red flag that we need to Mm -hmm. deal with and something that's actually going to produce in us a a maturing and a maturing of our faith, a maturing of ourself, a maturing and able to handle harder, tougher situations the next time. Um, But I would Mm -hmm. say having being self-aware might be the first place to start in that sorting Mm -hmm. process of Mm -hmm. like, what are my typical, what do I, what do I typically do in a hard situation? Like Mm -hmm. I know for me, I am good at not thinking about my emotions. So for me, I, my like kind of crutch is just like, it's fine. And Mm -hmm. Ben loves when I say that, Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) <laughs> to say it's fine and to not, and that for me, my problem is actually not having too many emotions. My problem is not having enough emotions. And we probably all know where that line is. And if you don't know where that line is, that's probably the first thing to start to pray for. Yeah. But I, mm. to push back on that, I would, I would argue that we all have emotions because it's part of being a human being. Mm-hmm. I would say that, that we, we train ourselves to deal with well, them how differently. You deal with you. I'm not saying I don't have emotions. How I deal with my emotions, I say I don't have them. Right. Um, I think I think that I'm in good. some ways kind of reveals a little bit of maybe yeah. your tendency in dealing with them in, in the sense that I think that we all have to develop kind of an inner coach. That mm-hmm. I think that's such a critical thing. I think of like where where we, you know, you think of a coach kind of meeting an athlete for a training session and then it's their job to kind of assess objectively where they are and determine a course forward, correct mm-hmm. weaknesses. And this all sounds very self-helpy. And I think very soon here, we need to bring Jesus into this because that mm-hmm. is the bedrock mm-hmm. and the foundation of what I'm going to talk about. Right. But I do think that part of it is that you got to have that coach thing. I know, Jody, you, I know you know what I'm talking about, where it's like, mm-hmm. all right, well, I'll start mm-hmm. to feel this and I'll kind of dwell in it for a little bit. But then at some point I say, uh, uh-uh. all right, mm-hmm. all right, what's going on? Let's do some inventory here. Let's go on a prayer walk. What's going on? And I, sometimes I have to be very methodical mm-hmm. about it. I'm like, am I tired? Mm-hmm. Am I eating good? Mm-hmm. Is there some unresolved tension in my life? Is there some conflict I haven't dealt with? There's some sin thing I'm not dealing with. And, and I kind of go through this mental inventory because I think you mm-hmm. got to have, that's what I mean by kind of having this, um, yeah. this, this practical okay. dealing with your emotions, because I think a lot of people, they feel, and then they go, uh, mm-hmm. medicate, distract, or move on. And, and <laughs> I mean, Anya, if you're medicating, distracting, or moving on, you're, that's, that's a recipe for, for dealing with the consequences later, right? You can't yeah. go living like that because we all have to deal with these things that we're going through. Yeah. Yeah, I just, um, I would like to tell you an example how I deal with one emotion <laughs> lately yeah. because it's very oh. interesting what you said, Ben. I um, I woke up on Monday and uh, this Monday and I was really, um, I didn't know why I feel like that, but uh, one of the things that was not working, it was my, um, I have back problems for the last eight years and they're just going and I just had a lot of <laughs> accidents and it was just it's just very frustrating for me because last week I decided to do more exercise and started to run and um on Monday I woke up and I just felt really in pain and I just was like oh I really said like I'm going to do it I'm going to mm-hmm. push through it and it will be fine and um and I went to my place that I told you about this before to my re- to the river and I, and I was walking and I just felt like all of the emotions and I really felt down and all of the because the thing is that when when one emotion doesn't work it's just like I feel like it's a tons of other emotions that are coming to you and some lies coming mm-hmm. like you start to feel fear you start to feel like insecure you start to feel like what's going on it's just something not right with you you start to feel depressed. And, and I just, it really took me, it really put me down. And, Mm -hmm. um, and I started to remember somebody speaking one day before about fear 
and how we shouldn't be fearful. And for the whole time, I was just always felt like feeling really strong. And this time I really felt like sick physically. So I felt like, what if I have coronavirus? You know, it can get me to, as well. And I'm just walking to my place where I usually pray. And I just was really afraid. And when I got there, uh, I, I have this, you know, um, the time that I'm reading the passage and I'm reading Matthew 21. And there is the story when Jesus saw he was very hungry and he saw the fig tree and he wanted to get the fruit, but there was no fruit. There was only leaves. And he just cursed the, the fig tree and uh, it just dried out. And the disciples were asking, like, well, well you know, like, how is it possible? Like, you know, like, wh wh where, how can we have this faith, you know, like, just to, um, to, to, to dry the fig tree like this? And, and, and Jesus said, and Jesus said to, to them, and let me just open because it's just um, very inter interesting. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. If you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what, what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. And I just, I'm reading this, and I was like, okay, I don't have enough faith. I just really, I started to like saying, I don't have enough faith. I need to do something about that. You know, like I said, Jesus, I really want to have more faith. I want to have faith to be healed. I want to experience something. And then, um, and then I just came back home the whole day. I felt really bad, really sick. And the, the, I was going to sleep and I just was crying to, to look. I was like, I, I am again feeling sick. I'm again, not, not, not right it's just like i don't want to feel like this and we prayed and i went to sleep and for the last six nights i was always waking up at one at one time 5 34 it was five in the morning 5 34 i was like why am i waking up at 5 34 and, and i and i was just like mm, i was asking jesus to show me something i was like okay i have to look at the gospel and i open mark 534 and this is what i read daughter your faith has healed you go in peace wow. and be freed from your suffering mm -hmm. and i just mm -hmm. took it and i was crying and i was just like i can't believe it this is what jesus just told me daughter wow. and he's just like daughter wow. your faith has healed you go in peace and be freed from your suffering you know what i did I just put my trainers and I went to the run to this <laughs> river and mm -hmm. I just was crying the whole time. And I was like, God, only you can do it. Jesus, only you can heal me. And I'm taking on, I just believe in that. And I really, since then, I didn't have any pain in my back. I feel really good physically. Wow. And I just feel like, you know, it's, of course, there is emotions, but they are just connected with something. It's just like the feelings that you have, because you might not feel good physically. You might not feel uh, good spiritually, but it's just, I feel like how wonderful Jesus is. How he is just yeah. so powerful yeah. that he can speak to you through through his word you know, like this. Yeah. Well, I, I think this is a perfect, perfect opportunity to transition into the reality that God made us, right? And that he made mm. all of who we are. And that includes our emotions and our mind and our feelings. And those, like the rest of creation, were mm. subject to the fall. And I, I do think that mental illness is is stigmatized because partially we don't understand it. It, and it's partially internal and it's partially something that maybe conveys weakness on some level. Um, but I think that this is a part of us that also needs to be redeemed. And we are having this awesome conversation with Josh um, from uh, Showbread uh, on Monday. And uh, he was talking about the idea that you are, if, the, if you do not resist it, you are being conformed into the, pr the pressures of the culture of, around you. And, and so in other words, your, your emotions and feelings are going to get sucked into the culture. They're going to be pulled into, into sin if you're not consciously going against that. And so I, I love that because you spoke the truth of, of who Jesus is and what he says to you into those feelings. And mm -hmm. ultimately they submitted, they weren't unreal, but they submitted to the power of God's word. 
And, and so it, that I think has to be that next stage, right? It's like we reflect on it, we we sort it, but the way we sort it and the way we overcome it is through the power of God's word, right, Courtney? I mean, that's how we, that's how ultimately we bring victory and and mm-hmm. redemption to uh, part of us that unfortunately has fallen like everything else. Yeah, and I think through God's word, God can also give you people to help you help you see the things that you're dealing with. And maybe Anya, somebody needed to hear that. And I know for me, I was having some big emotions in the beginning of this quarantine. And I, um, it wasn't so much that I was like running from them, but I felt silly to feel so emotional about them because I had a lot of people in my life going through some really hard things. And I was like, well, it's kind of dumb that I'm just like feeling so bad and emotional about these hard things in my life. Um, and Maureen, who's a part of our group, our Sager group, and she's probably listening. She wrote on Facebook about how she was experiencing this ache of not being able to travel to New Zealand to see her first mm-hmm. granddaughter be born. Um, and how she got that there's a lot of people in the world going through some really hard things, but she felt like God was releasing her to feel that ache in her life. And it's okay for us to feel an ache. And it doesn't mean that it's putting it above somebody else's ache, but it's okay for you to have a feeling and to work through that emotion. And it was like such a release for me, like, okay, like God, I get it. Like I'm allowed to have something that's hard and it doesn't Mm. make somebody else's hard less hard or me, you know, trumping their circumstance, but that it's okay that we acknowledge that things can be hard in our life and that God is in control and that he can redeem that situation, but it's okay for us to feel that Mm. something is that ache in our life. And I love that. And for me, Maureen's little Facebook post was exactly what I needed. And I was like, thanks God for just like kind of blessing me with that word at that point in, in just feeling like God heard my funny, like not funny, but heard my like feelings of it's not okay for me to be feeling something right now because my life's really not that hard. Yeah. But again, I Mm -hmm. I think even in that, I think that there's a, there's even a level of, of, God revealing to you that your emotions matter, even in the way you conveyed that, because you, you yeah. in a Freudian sense, you almost slip out funny because mm. I think that if you're honest, you've probably grown up with the sense that emotions are not valid and you're, it's not okay for you to feel. And, and I think that we create these false dichotomies that, that, you know, mm. God wants us to be strong and, and he does and he, but, but he redeems through weakness yeah. And we are weak and we are broken. And also he wants to give perspective, but he doesn't do so in such a way that that's it's condemning. You. That's condemning. But I, I, for me, I just love the fact I love, and God has done this so many times in my life that he, and I know for all of you probably have a story too, that it's like, he comes and shows you the answer you need to hear mm-hmm. in a really random way. And it's yeah. like, God cares so much about me and the feelings in my life and acknowledging that it is okay for me to be feeling like I am going through a hard time that he has Maureen post this little, not this thing about her ache, which to me, I'm like, oh gosh, that is a huge thing like that because I am a mother and I'm a daughter. I feel like that is so intense that you can't go be with your daughter when she has her first baby. Like that's so sad to me. And so for me, I like really connected and that God kind of orchestrated all those things like that. Marine posted. I read it because I don't often go on Facebook that much. And I read it and it just was like the perfect timing that was like, mm. it's okay, Courtney, for you to be feeling this, these hard emotions when other people in your life are going through some really life and death things and not, and, and acknowledging that it's okay that I had those feelings. And I love that that's the kind of God we serve, that he will lift you up when you need it. And we can count on that. We can count that he is there for us and that everything we are feeling is, has not escaped the grasp of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So Jody, you, you often give this kind of talk in a different kind of context, which is to a bunch of 20 something jet lagged SMS Steiger mission school students uh, who, for those who have traveled and experienced jet lag, nothing to quite reveal uh, 
you know, a weird cacophony of emotions like uh, like traveling very far from home and being in a strange mm -hmm. environment. You know, in some ways, it's it's like what we're experiencing with this pandemic. It it, it maybe isn't creating the feelings as much as it is uh, heightening them or revealing what's there or or just contributing to them. But what what practical advice do you give? How can we center this back on on God's truth? Um, because ultimately we need that framework, right? It's not enough to acknowledge the feeling um, and, and just categorize it. We ultimately need something to weigh it against. What kind of feeling is this? What should I feel about this feeling? If this feeling is saying I'm invalid, what does Jesus say about me? Uh, we need we need that framework, right? That's that's ultimately how we navigate this complex human yes. condition. Yep, it is. It is. You have to stand on the truth. But um, but it's the girls have really brought up some really interesting things. I, I, emotions are are a beautiful thing, actually, can be a beautiful thing, mm. I guess what I would say is, you know, when you feel this joy, you know, or or just the love of, of the, you know, of God, you know, where you, he actually, you can actually experience that, or just things like in nature, you know, you just are, I have been astounded by the beauty of God's nature, you know, so these emotions that come are so, so, can be so incredible. It's just that you can't let them control you so that you go down kind of like you were th thinking, Anya, you know, it seemed like you were going a little bit down a, a downward spiral with your, oh, the fear, the, you know, I'm never going to be healed or whatever. And then you looked at truth, at God's truth, and he spoke to you and said, nope, that emotion is not true that I, I am here for you. I healing is, yeah. is I, I, I want to love you. Like my, you're my daughter. And I, mm -hmm. and I want to, I want to talk to you and love you. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's just awesome. I mean, for me, but I think we all have different things about emotions for me. I think because of just various things I went through, um, I thought I have to have control of my emotions and then you don't let them go. You don't l allow yourself to, to feel the beautiful part of it. So there's, it's, hmm. a, it's an interesting thing, but yes, need God's truth. That's where we'll, we'll come to eventually. That's what we need to do. You know, you know, what's so cool is that um, deep down, we can say something like uh, all things that are good are from God. Um, but then we don't, really truly believe that or we don't really live that out and the reality is if you think about it god created you right and so mm. he created every part of you including your emotions and so what we can falsely believe is mm. that to control your emotions is to eliminate your emotions mm. i think probably the greatest thing the greatest tactic of the enemy is to make you feel nothing yes mm. right that's probably the greatest yes. sadness is to feel nothing is to mm -hmm. feel numb is to feel no emotions whatsoever yeah. When the reality is redeemed emotions are more passionate. Mm -hmm. I think you experience righteous anger and deep joy and, mm -hmm. and sadness. Like, oh, I'm, this sounds corny, but like, I often find myself crying during movies. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's a, I like that. Cause I feel like, I feel deeply like Luke, Luke, Anya's husband is crying all the time, but he's an emotional <laughs> guy. And that's cool. Like Not during the movies. I cried during the movies. I cried during <laughs> movies, like even dumb movies. He but, just cried yeah. during Onward. I know, but I it was emotional. <laughs> like, yeah. and I guess what I'm trying to say is redeemed emotions are bigger. They're better. They're fuller. Mm -hmm. And and when Anya, mm -hmm. when you had the breakthrough, when you were declaring mm -hmm. the goodness of God, mm -hmm. you weren't mm -hmm. robotic. Like, mm -hmm. good, I have the breakthrough now. Now I will run with no feeling. No, you yeah. were like mm -hmm. shouting for joy and crying. And because real mm -hmm. redeemed emotions are richer, yes, better, too. unperverted yeah. and full of life. And so, again, don't hear me say something I'm not saying, which is that to, to become redeemed in this area is to be devoid of emotions, far from mm -hmm. it. Everything mm -hmm. God intended for good, this mm -hmm. world destroys, yeah. including emotions. And I think... Like it's the same where people think that to follow Jesus is not to be creative or not to be fun or not to be filled with joy. What a lie. What a yeah. lie to follow God is to be the most creative and joy filled and passionate. It's the yeah. best community. It's the fullest emotions. And so I think that's a, such an amazing point here is that, man, this is not aiming for an emotionless reality. This is aiming for the emotions as God created them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Even what even what Courtney said, you know, just and and what Marine experienced, you know, I or even I've 
even thought of it like in funerals it's it's good to feel things to mm -hmm. to mm -hmm ache for people to to for marine to ache to that she can't go to her daughter she's just blocked mm. from that you know and mm. or for you from you for you to actually be able to have your heart so open that you can just cry for your friends you know that have gone through really really difficult times yeah. it's you know the neg that that can be seen as negative but it's not it's mm. it's our full experience as as a child of, of of god how he created us yeah it's awesome are there Perhaps yeah. no more powerful. Well, there's lots of powerful things in scripture, but when Lazarus dies mm -hmm. and, and it just says, it's just two words, Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. I, and I love that yeah. because here's the son of God, fully aware of the hope of eternity, fully man, fully God, filled with the Holy Spirit, overcome by the emotions mm -hmm. of the moment. Mm -hmm. and, and I think modeling for us that, that even this human life, the redeemed human life is not going to be robotic or devoid of emotions at all. And, and that's mm -hmm. just simply what the full mm -hmm. life is, is that, that we, that we feel everything. It's like, it's like HD, you know, mm -hmm. we're not living this sort of low resolution life anymore. We're experiencing the fullness of everything mm -hmm. that God created us. So for those who are caught up, for those that are um, feeling off, Let's get a little bit practical here. What are some scriptures? What are some strategies? What are some ways that you have found work for you? Um, and again, there are people with real deep, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. clinical issues, critical yeah. issues. So I'm not talking about that necessarily because that I think requires a level of ex expertise and, mm -hmm. and dealing with mm -hmm. that. I'm not necessarily meaning for the scope of this podcast to cover, although mm -hmm. these truths also apply there. Um, but what are some yeah. what are some thoughts that you would give to someone who who mm. just like man I'm in a funk? Well, I feel like Anya's story is a prime example of like where you need to be to be redeemed from situations. It's like if you are not in God's word, if you're not putting yourself in a situation where you it doesn't need to be intense, it doesn't even need to be that elaborate. But, but if you're not reading the word, pouring yourself into hearing from God, you're not going to hear from Him. And I have found that so many times where I'm like, oh God, I can't hear from you. And I'm like, well, am I even trying to hear from him? Am I, am I putting myself in a situation um, where he's even able to speak to me? And, and I am limited. God is not limited. So the fact that I am not hearing from him is because I have limited resources to hear from him, not because he lacks them. And so I just think that as a body of believers, like we need to be serious about our our time in the word and, and seeking God. And I think that yeah. when we, I know for me, I, I, um, joined a pretty intense Bible study three years ago and I, and it's, it's goes throughout the school year and it has been just life changing for me. And I have never read the Bible more intensely than I have in the last three years. And I, and I'm, it doesn't just mean that it's easier that it, um, has even come without a cost. Like there is a cost. It takes me time. It takes, I have to be committed. And like, uh, it's every, every single week, there's a long study. And honestly, sometimes it's like the night before I'm just trying to get it done because life happens. Um, but I have also received the most rich fruit in my life because of this commitment I have made. And I think that it is not for a lack of uh, material for you to study. It's just that you need to just dive into something. And then that's when you're going to hear from God. And I think that's when we're going to see breakthroughs when we, when we are, um, of course, there's a, I'm sure Jody has lots of amazing scripture she could quote. Um, <laughs> well, that sounded so like, yeah, there no, she I goes was, again. I was myself <laughs> like, of not, hey, not being you are my mother in law. You are the best. My mother in law is so wise. She has Bible yeah, woman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Martin, that's you need to say something you. nice. You're the female walking Bible, right, Jody? That's why you um, married David. That, yeah. <laughs> that's why David married you. It's, we've been confused this wow. whole time. We all thought yeah. you married David because he was the walking Bible. Yeah. Um, anyways, but on a serious note, to hear hear from God, you need to be in the word. Yep. And if yeah. you are not hearing from him, you are not probably not in the word. Yeah. yeah. Well, yep. Yes. Yeah. There's, there, there's one thing that in all these emotions, when you're going through a difficult time, 
this is going to be, I think hopefully this is going to be a really practical thing. When I'm going through a difficult time, that's when you get, you're really, the test is, is are you going to let your emotions just go crazy or, or you're going to really walk through, through it, through the difficult time and just keep your eyes fixed on God and really focus in on his promises. Cause there's a, like Courtney said, there's many of them I could, t- I could say, but, Come on, Jody, but quote them. <laughs> just go okay. for it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but just taking one step at a time when you're in a difficult mm, yeah. time, yeah. time, don't worry about what the whole picture is going to look like and just keep your eyes fixed on God and say, okay, I am not going to look at my circumstances right now. I'm going to look at you. And when it says, you know, you are my rock and my salvation and you're my fortress. I will not be shaken. I'm going to hang on to that and just keep putting aside the circumstances and the mm-hmm. emotions that come with that. And, and you can get through a difficult time, I guess is that's my practical thing is yeah. you can even go through a very difficult time step by step. And you just keep looking at God mm-hmm. and not at the circumstances. So, and controlling those emotions by saying, God, you have them. They're crazy mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. 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 I think it's important also yeah. to like, I love that. And that's all so true that um, just like taking one step at a time, but yeah. if we are not consistently seeking God yep. and yep. following mm-hmm. yeah. his truth and getting into his truth, when those hard times, they, yes. they crash us to the ground. Yeah. The foundation is in there. Yeah. And I know that mm-hmm. that's something I was, I know you teach a lot about Jody and also something that like David talks a lot about when we were on tour. It's like, if you don't prepare for this battle, mm-hmm. you're not going to make it through the battle. And you don't know when the battle's going to come. Unfortunately, we can't see the future. We didn't We didn't know coronavirus was going to happen. And so if you didn't prepare, and and it's, so, it's just, I know it's like, but it's okay. And it's hard. This is the hard thing about following Jesus. It is okay if you didn't prepare because God will still be there for you. But if you have the means to prepare, you should do it because it's just going to make your life so much more rich when you're able to stand strong in, in the storm and say like, I don't know what's going on. My emotions are all out of whack. I feel so alone and so lost, but I trust God that if I take one step, you've got me because I have prepared for this. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I really would like to, I, I'm, I think I'm like a storyteller. I should just start to write a book <laughs> maybe one day. Um, so anyway, but I really would like to tell you the story that what happened when um, Luke went for a tour with no longer music and Sarah just was born and I had really bad time. I couldn't get up of bed and it really caused me, um it's it just um it was just like um depression really i just but it was all together because like i told you i had problem with my back and i couldn't move for three months from the bed i was just lying and just still and i couldn't move and it was just after i did something and it, i just i just felt really bad you know i dropped sarah i was trying to carry her and she just fall because i didn't have Phoenix even in my arms and I was just totally just almost like dead in on, on the bed I couldn't take Daniel to school I couldn't lift up Sarah there was nobody this time in the house and and I really felt like lions are around me like I just felt like I'm going to die I just really this was just horrible feeling and I am lying and I'm just like breathing and I'm feeling like I think I'm giving my life away. Like I'm just giving up, like emotions of just giving up came. And at this time, I have tattoo of one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It's from Daniel 6, 27. He is the living God. He rescues and saves. And, and I saw and I have also tattoo of the lion and I just saw he is my lion. He is, he is my king. He is my Lord. He is the living God. He rescues and saves. And I remember when I just, when I just said that a few times, it just like, like the truth came to the slides that were before, like I felt like was trying to kill me. It just like now just came up and just destroyed it. Like I felt like this, you know, lions just, you know, just rowing around my bed, just de- were destroyed. And I feel this is the power of of the you know of his word of god's word when yeah. we know when we memorize book you know his this you know the bible is just meeting with 
um, with the author. This is just something incredible. Every book is amazing. But here, every time when I read, I just feel like, okay, I'm reading a book and I can talk to the author of this book and I can just, you know, meditate and ask, so what did you mean by that? What do you want to say to me? And in this time, these words, this verse were like just totally like telling me like, don't worry, I am your living God. I rescue you and I, and I saved you, you know? Yeah. So, so just guys, just hold your book, yeah. your Bible and just keep it and memorize it. It's just yeah. really, it's a power. And I was going to, I was going to say that I, I think for me, it's, it's the three R's, right? It's community, <laughs> <laughs> solitude and scripture memorization. Those are huge for me. None of them are ours, but in some language, they probably okay. are. Can you repeat them? So we actually can community, take you seriously for a moment. Okay? Community, scripture memorization and solitude. I, th I think solitude mm. matters because we live in a time where we, we are so we're moving so fast. We don't reflect we don't mm -hmm. sit, we don't listen. And, and so I think often we don't even know what we're feeling because we never sit still long enough to, mm -hmm. to even consider it. Mm -hmm. I think solitude is, is a lost discipline in our age. Um, and it, it's incredibly difficult to have solitude uh, in, in our just technological age, in our age of distraction. Mm -hmm. um, I think community is huge. You know, uh, Jordan Peterson talks about, the, from a secular perspective more, he talks about you need to be around other people because they keep you from going insane, mm -hmm. right? They keep you from going nuts. It's other people in your yeah, life. Yeah. That's probably, yeah. probably in his mind, that's one of the primary reasons for marriage. So someone can be like, what is, what are you talking about? That's, that's not true. Like, I, I love you, but that's not true. You, this feelings you have are not valid. That's how he comes at it more of a, like a, you know, an army drill sergeant or a coach. But the point is, Oh, so you guys would be good friends then. Yeah. Well, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I would love to be friends with Jordan Peterson. <laughs> You got my number, man. Um, anyway, so you need people around you that that know the truth, mm -hmm. that can kind of help you out of the forest, so to speak. They can they can see the the forest from the trees, mm -hmm. and they can help you navigate through your emotions. And then I think scripture memorization. I think this we have kind of made mm -hmm. it th seem like well, you do that when you're five and six, mm -hmm. and it's cute. You memorize these little scriptures, and and then you come home from your class and you tell your parents. Um, no, yeah. I think man, the scriptures I've memorized. I don't know about you guys, but the scriptures I've memorized are Come always yeah. in my mind. When I'm praying, it's like I'll, there are certain scriptures that I memorize that I say, he was in me, he was greater than he was in the world. There's no mm -hmm. temptation that has overcome me except what is common to man. Mm -hmm. If you know, if you lack wisdom, he will give it to you. Yeah. Ask anything in the accordance of the will of the Father and it will be given to you. There are certain things that I just pray almost every day, mm -hmm. probably not by accident, but because I took the time to memorize and internalize mm -hmm. those scriptures. And so I think we need to do that. But one thing I want to say, and, and I think this maybe lends itself to part two, part two, um, is some of this stuff is like hitting people like a water gun hitting a tank. And they're saying, wow, that's all great, but I got some serious stuff going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are some patterns of thinking in mm -hmm. somebody I know or in my own life that are deep, that are entrenched, that are holding me back. And for years and years and years, I'm dealing with these things and hear us when, well, hear me at least, this is not, we're not oversimplifying this because there are some deep patterns of thinking that, that I can, I think can be demonically inspired. I think can be just so habituated by time and, and sin nature that, that you can quote all the Psalms you want, you're not just lifting those patterns. It, it yeah. takes years and maybe counseling. I think counseling has been overly stigmatized. I think counseling probably mm -hmm. should be something good, good Christian counselors should be something that's more used. You know, I like, I find it hilarious that the only thing not stigmatized is premarital counseling. Premarital counseling is the dumbest thing in the world. <laughs> you don't know anything. You don't have any experience, any problems yet. It's like, <laughs> you think everything's awesome. There should be one year, five year, seven year, 10 year marital counseling, not premarital yeah. counseling. It's like, you know, you're looking at each other with rosy eyed glasses. Yeah, like, I really oh, liked you in premarital. She loved counseling. me back then. Now it's just like haggard. But um, anyway, we need to get, I think maybe next week, we need to try to yeah. dig deeper into how do you deal with either someone in your life or your own life where you got some mm. serious, serious patterns of thinking. I mean, there's, there's this book I, I've been reading that talks about well, it's, it's called the coddling of the American mind. And it's more about our culture today, but it gives this list 
of things uh, that that you can really that can really keep you in a rut. It's like emotional reasoning, reasoning, letting your feelings guide your interpretation of reality, catastrophizing, focusing on the worst possible outcome and seeing it as most likely, overgeneralizing, perceiving a global pattern of negatives on the basis of a single incident. Dichotomous thinking, uh, viewing events or people as all or nothing. Everyone loves me or everyone hates me. I will always fail. I will always succeed. Mind reading, assuming you know what people think about you without having sufficient evidence of their thoughts. Mm -hmm. You walk into a room and yeah, I just already know everyone hates mm -hmm. me. You know, labeling, assigning global negative traits to yourself or others. I'm undesirable. He's a rotten person. Negative filtering, disc discounting positive, et cetera, et cetera. I think we need to dig into some of these deeper patterns. And, and again, I'm not a trained counselor. None of us are. This is just a conversation. Um, but it's a conversation that I think we all need to have because there are people who are dealing with, with really deep, dark things. Uh, and to you, I'd first say, get real help, mm -hmm. like real help mm -hmm. counseling. Um, I think that is something, like I said, is stigmatized in our culture. Um, but I, but I do think that we all deal with this and that things that we've mentioned are helpful for everybody. Um, but like with anybody, you know, a lot of us are going to get colds, but some of us get serious things and need mm -hmm. serious treatment. Uh, and I think that, that it, as a Christian community, we need to make that something that is encouraged and accepted because yeah. it's so important. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. All right. It's Anya, your stories are awesome. Maybe it should be mm -hmm. Anya's serious stories instead of David's random stories or Jody's <laughs> random stories. That's nothing to say against your stories, mother. I love your stories. I loved the toilet story. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me mention it again. The Steiger Compact School. Let me let me try to share that real quick here for y'all again. Uh, you're going to want to check this out because I do think we're going to fill up. I think you said like 800. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to want to get to that. You're going to want to hit that big, fun red button. Yes. Uh, it's going to get you in. in and you're going to be able to get some really unique training that that previously mm -hmm. was inaccessible in this way. So consider checking that out. Uh, this podcast will come out in audio format tomorrow around 1 p.m., 3 p.m. Brittany Johnson, Johnson, I'm really sorry, Brittany. Brittany Johnson says Anya's voice is so soothing. Does Luke <gasps> feel the same way, Anya? Luke's voice oh, is like yes. a rat being drowned in butter. <laughs> no, that, that's you. And my voice is, is like a, you know, like a some sort of, I don't know. I got nothing. Oh, okay. It's been a long week. It's Friday, right? No, it's Oh, dang it. It's only Wednesday. Uh, rate and review this podcast. Share it with somebody that you know and love. Even with somebody you don't love. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's it, right, ladies? Are we good? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks, you guys. We'll talk Thank to you, you Brittany. Time. Uh, you know what's funny is I don't think I have the outro bumper that we used to have. So it's going to be Luke, David, and me. I'm really sorry. I love We're you. We're more oh, beautiful. Oh. So it's okay. I, I could Maybe just end I, with this. <laughs> Or maybe I could end with this. Oh no, please no. <laughs> no end with Tiva. I could end with this. Oh, that's Tate? nothing. All right. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. We love you. We'll talk love to you, you next time. Peace.